Okay, and let's move on to now what's pretty much the end of this section right here. We're definitely through most of it. Let's start talking about this concept here of one-sided limits. Okay, and what we had talked about way back at the beginning of this section right here, there was a phrase, and we said that a limit of f of x as x approaches a is a y value that your function approaches but may not actually reach as x approaches a from both sides. And in every example that we've done before, all five or six of them, in every case, as x was converging towards this a value of 2, our y values were all converging towards the same number. Uh, in these three cases, it was 4 in, in a and b and in c. And then as we kept going, uh, let's see here, uh, our y values were converging towards 13 from both sides. These numbers, as we read them from top to bottom, were converging towards 13. These three numbers, as read from bottom to top, as x was approaching 5, those values are converging towards 13 as well. Same thing happened here with converging towards 14. Uh, this one, which I don't think I ever actually wrote down the answer to, they were all converging towards 6. Okay, so we saw the same convergence from both sides, but that doesn't always necessarily have to happen. So let's take a look at this example right here. And this is a function I'm not expecting you guys to be familiar with at all, but it is one that I think you guys could probably figure out. So let's take a look at what happens here, guys. We're looking for the function f of x equals the absolute value of x over x. So let's think about what this graph might look like. Well, as you guys go ahead and start to think about what happens when you put in positive values for x. For example, the absolute value of 1 over 1 is going to get you 1. So we'll go ahead and we'll plot that point right there. Now that one point isn't supposed to tell you much about the shape of the graph, but let's keep going. When x is 2, absolute value of 2 over 2 is 1 again. And the absolute value of 3 over 3 is 1 again. And I think that as long as I continue to do this out to the right, I'm going to get 1 because absolute value is irrelevant and can be ignored when you know that x is already positive. So this basically looks like it's going to be a big ray going out here to the right and going on forever. The only tricky thing is that 0 is not in the domain of this function. So I can't put a closed dot at 0, so I'm going to put an open dot instead and draw something that looks like that. Now, if we think about what happens when we put in negative numbers, for example, f of negative 1, let's mull that over. In the numerator, the absolute value of negative 1 is going to give us 1, and dividing it by negative 1 in the bottom is going to give us negative 1. So we are going to be right here. When we now go to put in negative 2, the numerator becomes positive 2, the denominator stays negative 2, 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1. 3 divided by negative 3, 4 divided by negative 4, this thing's going to do kind of the same thing over here, but again, 0 is not in the domain of that function. So that's going to be an open dot there, again, on the y-axis. So with those two things in mind, everybody, let's take a look at what's going on right here. Sorry about that. We now are going to try to ask ourselves what's the right-hand limit, the left-hand limit, and the two-sided limit. So the way we denote a right-hand limit, everybody, is we write the limit as x approaches 0, but we put a little plus sign after that, indicating that it's a limit as x approaches 0 from the right moving to the left. Now there always has to be the name or the definition of a function after a limit before you can answer that. So the limit as x approaches 0 here from the right, let me just draw a random dot here again. So if I put that on the function here, as x is to the right of 0 and is getting closer and closer and closer to an x value of 0, our y values are 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. They seem to be converging on a y value of positive 1. So the right-hand limit to this function is 1. But now for the left-hand limit, what is the limit as x approaches 0, but with a negative sign now, that means from the left of f of x? All right, so now let's grab that red dot and let's move it here. So as we are to the left of 0, but as we are moving to the right, as x is getting closer and closer to 0, 
Our y values are negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. We seem to be converging towards a y value of, you guessed it, negative 1. So for the first time, everybody, your, your y values that you are converging towards are different from the left and the right hand side. And so when we now talk about a two-sided limit, that is actually what we were doing in the last umpteen sections right there. When we just talk about a limit without any adjective, I guess, at the end here, right hand or a left hand, we just write that as we have been doing as the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x. But let's talk about this answer now, guys. We said that the definition of a limit is the y value that your function approaches as x approaches a from both sides. We do not have agreement in this problem right here on what y value our function is approaching from both sides. It approaches positive 1 from the right. It approaches negative 1 from the left. So in this case, everybody, we are going to say, and those of you who know and love the movie Mean Girls are going to love this, the limit does not exist. So a two-sided limit here, everybody, does not exist when your one-sided limits disagree with one another. So because 1 and negative 1 are not equal, we would say that the limit does not exist. Okay, so that's one we need to talk about more. So here is that same concept spelled out a little bit more. Now right here in this first red box, this is written in a fairly formal mathematical notation, and this definition makes a ton of sense if you can understand it and speak math. The limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to L. Now let me stop you right there. You notice how there's no plus or minus after that A. So this one right here, we're actually talking about a two-sided limit. So a two-sided limit equals L. That implies that it does exist and it equals some finite number. If and only if, so that is a biconditional statement, guys. We can read that in both directions. If and only if, okay, what do we have here? The right-hand limit of f of x is equal to the left-hand limit of f of x at a, and if both of those limits are equal to L. So this is probably a biconditional statement that's more useful to read backwards. If your right-hand limit as x approaches a from the right of a function, if it exists, and if it equals the left-hand limit as x approaches a of the same function, if they're both equal to L, then your two-sided limit uh, as x approaches a of the same function, that equals L as well. So that's how you would write it out mathematically. That said, a lot of people, even at your level, guys, nothing to be embarrassed about here, feel that English is a little bit easier to understand than math. That hurts my feelings a little bit, but I get it. So this might be something to just drop in your brain here, guys. A limit exists, and again, that means a two-sided limit. So, th oh boy, that was bad, bad, bad. Let's try that again. Undo, 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 undo. Oh, now we've done it. That was really bad. Okay, let's try that one more time. The two-sided limit exists. Okay, here we go. We're just going to leave that junk there. So the two-sided limit exists if both one-sided limits exist and if they are equal to each other. In the example we just did, the two one-sided limits both existed. There's a one and a negative one, but they're not equal to each other. So that's why the limit itself does not exist. Okay, so let's knock this out real quick, guys, and let's talk about some infinite limits here. And I think these are probably best handled, everybody, if we look at this thing graphically. So you'll notice I've given you three examples, but they're all dealing with the same function, 1 over x minus 2, which I'm hoping you guys can look at and go, oh yeah, that's pretty easy. This thing has a vertical asymptote here when x is equal to positive 2. So we have a vertical asymptote right here. And then this is a pretty basic, oh, I'm sorry, it also has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, or the x-axis. And if we just thought about some simple x values, we could probably figure out pretty quickly where this thing exists. When we plugged in 3, we get a 1 over 1, so we get the point three one. And you know what, guys? That tells me everything I need to know for right now. This graph looks like that.
Gotcha. And if we plugged in something like zero, for example, we'd get one over negative two or negative one half. And that tells me that this graph exists in this lower left quadrant. And it's going to look something like that. Okay, so with that in mind, everybody, let's see if we can answer these three questions here real quick. First of all, the limit as x approaches 2 from the right. So let me go back to my bouncing red dot here, everybody. The limit as x approaches 2 from the right could be found by putting this dot here at an x value greater than 2 and moving it back to the left. And as we can see, that as x is getting closer and closer and closer to 2, my y value seems to be rising and rising and rising, and it's never really going to end. And so what we would say there, and we got to be careful about how to interpret this, guys, is that this right-hand limit is infinity. Now, I've got to take advantage of this moment to stress yet again for the 17th time that the definition of a limit is the y value that your function approaches, not necessarily the y value that your function reaches. And I certainly hope everybody understands what I'm going to say right now, but it would be ridiculous to suggest that this y value is going to equal or reach infinity as x gets to 2. There's no such thing as reaching infinity. Infinity is simply a mathematical shorthand, really, for a limit, stating that a y value is increasing without bound, and it doesn't have a limit there. It, uh, it just increases uh, forever. Okay, let's switch over to the second problem here. Let's take a look at the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. So now that red dot is going to move over here. And as I move this thing slowly from left to right, our x value is approaching 2, but from the left, and our y value seems to be falling off the cliff right now. It's getting lower and lower and lower, and it's never really going to stop. And so in this case, everybody, we would say that our y value is approaching. Of course, it'll never get there, but it's approaching negative infinity. All right, so we do have a right-hand limit, that's positive infinity. We do have a left-hand limit, that's negative infinity. But now, this is actually a pretty easy question to answer. I'm now asking you for the two-sided limit as x approaches 2 of this same function. Well, right here, guys, since the right-hand limit is one thing and the left-hand limit is something different, the two-sided limit does not exist. By the way, pet peeve of mine, to say that something equals does not exist doesn't make any sense. You can't equal something that isn't there. So probably the better thing to do right here is just to make a sentence out of it, just like this. The limit as x approaches 2 of 1 over x minus 2 does not exist. I'm also a fan of putting an arrow here sometimes too. But this is an important example for you guys to look at and study and understand. The right-hand limit exists, the left-hand limit exists, but the two-sided limit does not exist because the right and the left-hand limits disagree. But I did want to show you this one here as well. And this, again, is a function I'm not expecting you guys to know by heart, but one that I feel smart people like yourselves could figure out pretty quickly. Now, this is really similar to the last problem that we just did, except that our denominator is being squared now. So, lucky for us, the vertical asymptote is still the same at x equals 2, and the horizontal asymptote is still the same at y equals 0 or the x-axis. But if we think about what happens now when we plug in a couple of x values, let's take a look. Putting in a 3, not much changes. 3 minus 2 is 1, squared is 1, and 1 over 1 is 1. So we get the ordered pair 3, 1, and without uh, spending too much time on this, this is still going to do pretty much the same thing as the last one. The interesting thing is now what happens when you put in a negative number, okay, or uh, excuse me, or where you get a negative number on the bottom. So let me go ahead and deal with 0 again, just like we did before. The 0 minus 2 gives us negative 2, but we now need to square negative 2 to get 4. So when we plugged in 0, we get a positive 1 fourth now for the y value. And that tells me, you guys, that this function now exists here in this upper left-hand quadrant. And that's really interesting when you think about it. This thing does not exist in the lower left nor in the lower right uh, quadrant. And there's a really good reason for that. In both of these two quadrants here, quadrant 3 and quadrant 4, ask yourself, what do the points in those quadrants have in common? 
Well, they both have negative y-coordinates, and it is absolutely impossible to put any real number in for x in this function and come up with a negative result. Everything you can do there is going to give you a positive number. You're not even going to get zero there, guys, ever, because the only way to get zero from a division problem is to put zero in the numerator, and that can't happen here. So this is what our function looks like. So now let's do our silly dancing red dot trick once again and see what happens. As we start here, okay, as x is approaching 2 from the right, our y value is increasing without bound, so our right hand limit is infinity. Now as we move it over here, as x is approaching 2 from the left, and going up, 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 up towards infinity again there, we are increasing without bound. That limit is infinity also. So since the left and right hand limits agree with one another, they're both positive infinity, we would say then that our limit here is going to be positive infinity as well. So this limit does exist because the left and the right hand limits agree with one another. Okay, guys, that is a wrap on section 2-2, so let's give that homework a shot, and let me know if you guys have any questions. Good luck.